Last time in part one of this topic, we looked at how the remote versus in-person work debate is unfolding in different countries. Global trends aside, each of us must grapple with these questions individually. This debate rages on as we all try to navigate the ever-changing waters of the workplace. Everywhere, people are wondering if remote work is here to stay or will it be a relic of the pandemic? For some of us, it's a mood point because certain frontline jobs simply don't lend themselves to working from home. For the rest of us that do have the privilege of choice, it comes down to preference, perception, and what we want to get out of work. For introverts, working from home can be a blessing, allowing them the space and quiet they need to work productively. For extroverts, on the other hand, the lack of social interaction and community can be difficult. Younger workers with children or aging parents may prefer to skip the office commute and put that time towards caregiving. Older employees may feel more comfortable in a traditional office setting. So how and where we want to work may depend on our fundamental outlook towards work. Is it a practical endeavor, a means to an end, or an avenue for social connection, leadership, and career growth, or both? Before COVID, conventional workplace wisdom seemed to suggest that people are more productive and collaborative in the office. Early adopters of remote work were often seen as less ambitious and were sometimes overlooked for plum assignments or promotions. COVID leveled the playing field. But some of these perceptions are returning as people head back to the office, especially concerns about productivity and innovation with a distributed workforce. At the heart of the whole debate, though, there is one consistent theme, that of flexibility. Employees want to know that an employer will be supportive as their careers and personal lives shift and change. Employers want to know that their staff will be available and willing to come in person when needed. That is why Stanford professor Nicholas Bloom predicts that a flexible work approach is here to stay for two key reasons. First, ever improving technology makes remote work increasingly seamless. And second, what he calls cohort effects. The idea that new firms that are growing up in this era will have management and employees who want to keep working flexibly, which will make it the norm in the future. Flexibility allows everyone to gain in some form. Employees can be healthier, happier, and perhaps more engaged in their work. Bloom's research shows that flexibility also leads to greater productivity with people being in the office when needed for key meetings and building connections, but having quiet time to do deep work at home without office distractions or time and energy lost in travel. Employers can also reap savings from reduced office costs and potentially fewer sick days. And finally, with large numbers of us skipping the commute at least part of the time, the environment wins as well. For years, we've all been grappling with work-life balance. COVID has taught us that there is a way to navigate our careers by embracing flexibility rather than separating work from life. The two are inextricably linked. Sometimes work has to take precedence, but equally, there are times when other parts of our life must take priority. The more we can see work as a part of life, the more managers and employees can find a balanced way forward for everyone. On that note, wishing you a great week ahead, be well, and see you next time on The Gist.